Gasoline Direct Injection, or GDI as it's commonly known, is the next generation of fuel injection now being used on most new executive type production vehicles. Some manufacturers use different names for their version of a direct injection system. GDI is a direction in which all vehicle manufacturers will have to go, as GDI gives outstanding performance and fuel economy while maintaining the minimum of exhaust pollution. The GDI system has two running modes, stratified and homogeneous. Stratified charge mode. This mode is the economical combustion cycle. In some systems, the air to fuel ratio can be as high as 65 to 1. In this mode, the injector delivers a minimum amount of fuel into the combustion chamber, just before the piston reaches the top and before the plug fires. This mode is used at idle and light throttle settings when the car is driven slowly in some systems. Homogeneous running mode. This mode is what would be called a normal combustion cycle with an air to fuel ratio of 25 to 1. In this mode, the injector delivers a normal amount of fuel into the combustion chamber. This gives the engine the required performance as the car goes faster. The engine management system determines when the system needs to switch between the stratified charge mode and the homogeneous running mode. As the fuel is injected directly into the combustion chamber, it does require components that will work at much higher pressures, up to 200 bar in most cases. This means that the cheaper produced plastic bodied injectors and aluminium cased fuel pumps have now been replaced by a high pressure stainless steel fuel pump and injectors, both designed to deliver very precise quantities of fuel at extremely high pressures for minute durations of time, in some cases fractions of a millisecond. This video attempts to show you some of the problems you may find with these types of injectors. In many instances, you may at first only detect a consequential problem caused as a result of the injector's performance. We hope this film will encourage you to not only detect and solve the problem, but to also identify and rectify the initial cause of the problem. These injectors are being driven with the correct peak and hold currents in sequential sequence, as they would be on the engine. Correct electronic operation of these injectors is far more important than running them at the potentially dangerous high operating pressure. To enable a safe and easy examination of the injector's performance, the AS new system runs at a lower and safer operating pressure of approximately 5 bar. The vehicle's GDI system operates at a potentially dangerously high fuel pressure, varying up to 200 bar. With the injector opening for short microsecond durations with a maximum opening duration of only 5 milliseconds, any visual spray analysis could be both difficult and dangerous. The ASNEW allows the user to safely examine in greater detail the injector's spray pattern for any discrepancies in the fuel distribution and atomization. For ease of use, in some operating modes the ASNEW system opens the injectors for a much longer duration. The injectors can be operated at various RPM and millisecond settings, restricted only by the number of injectors being tested in the sequential testing operation. The ASNEW also has a single injector selection feature and with the ability to rotate the injectors for closer inspection of the spray pattern, the technician's diagnosis can be far more accurate and critical. The ASNEW GDI adapter box is designed to test and service any GDI injector currently in service. There are a selection of wiring harnesses and fuel rail connectors to adapt the system to any GDI injector. The system comes with a service kit to replace the Teflon head seals that require renewal before the injector is refitted to the engine. The system has various simple connections to allow the user to connect with his ASNEW. Wiring harness, pump connection and power are all required. There is a port to allow PC connection and use of the optional extra remote control program. The LCD display shows the selection of the number of injectors being tested. The up and down keys change the selection number. The injectors on this rail are a combination of various manufacturers and applications and are selected for demonstration on this machine.
the GDI program follows a similar sequence of tests to that of the standard ASNU injector testing program. Starting with function 1, prime, where the air is bled from the system. The pressure is set to 5 bar. Next, function 2, leak test. Here we are examining the injectors for leaks. In this clip, you can see one injector starting to drip. This is not acceptable. Function 3 is inductance. This mode will pulse the injectors for 8,000 pulses. Check the display readings for any variations between the values. Flow mode 1. The settings are 200 RPM and 30 milliseconds. Here we can see the injectors operating in an exaggerated mode. This allows the user to examine and compare the injector's spray pattern for consistency in the fuel distribution and atomization. Using the up and down keys, we can select individual injectors in turn. While examining the spray pattern, we are also taking notice of the amount of atomized fuel created by the injectors and making a mental note of the differences between them. In this clip, we can see that injector number 6 has a much weaker spray than the previous injectors and produces a lot less atomized fuel. Flow mode 2. The settings are 200 RPM and 40 milliseconds. In this mode, we run the injectors to examine the spray patterns. As you can see, there are different shaped spray patterns between the injectors. The correct spray pattern for the designated application is critical and therefore it is paramount to ensure that all the injectors have the same spray angle and fuel droplet formation. The location of the injector in conjunction with the shape of the piston would determine the shape of the spray pattern. The wrong spray angle and the fuel will not mix with the incoming air and the process of correct combustion will fail and the lambda control will take actions to correct the problem taking drastic actions to protect the system if required. To help show this better, we have slowed down the clip of these injectors spraying. If you look closely, you can see different types of spray patterns and spray angles. A visual check of the atomization is also possible for the trained eye. The various vehicle manufacturers all have their own engine designs and have injectors produced to their own requirements. The most critical factor in the GDI injection system is the fuel distribution and atomization, as a shortage in fuel delivery can be easily corrected by the Lambda control system. Any intermittent changes in the fuel distribution or atomization are corrected by the short-term fuel trim as part of the adaptive engine management system. Any permanent changes in the fuel distribution or atomization are corrected by the long-term fuel trim. This fuel trim adjustment is not correcting the cause of the problem, it's adjusting the engine to compensate for it. All engines with direct injection have adaptive engine management systems. These systems are actually masking a deterioration in the injector's performance. Even if the injector's electronic operation does not show as a fault code, the injector, and in particular the fuel distribution and atomization, can still be responsible for a fault code being flagged up further downstream. Here you can see different shapes of spray distribution and strengths of atomization. If these were fitted to an engine, the engine would have some running and performance problems. Due to the amount of atomization caused by the injectors, it is easier to select single cylinder operation and examine the injectors individually. As we select the individual cylinders, we can clearly see differences in the distribution and atomization of the injector's spray pattern. These spray patterns would cause differences in the air-fuel ratios, something that the Lambda sensor would detect, but the problem would not be the lack or excess of fuel, but the Lambda system can only increase or decrease the opening times of the injector. The short-term fuel trim would also make adjustments to compensate, as would the long-term fuel trim if the discrepancies persisted. 
all of these adjustments are compensating for an injector performance problem, not correcting it. Flow Mode 4. The settings are 16 milliseconds and 900 RPM. In this clip, we have increased the millisecond duration and the RPM. The injectors are now pulsing at a sequence that is not always in time with the speed of the camera, and therefore the camera cannot always capture the complete operation of the spray pattern. Flow Mode 7. The settings are 8 milliseconds and 1800 RPM. When running the injectors on single function mode, you can see that injector number 6 is starting to weaken and the fuel spray is getting heavier. Flow Mode 10. The settings are 4 milliseconds and 3600 RPM. A further increase in RPM and we can see that injector number 4 is starting to have a weaker spray atomization. While the performance of injector number 6 continues to deteriorate. Flow mode 13. The settings are 2.5 milliseconds and 5400 RPM. In this clip, the RPM has been increased and although the injectors seem like they are running simultaneously, they are in fact running sequentially. The design of these injectors does mean that they are a lot noisier than a standard injector. When we switch to single injector mode, you can see a further deterioration in injectors number 4 and number 6. This lack of fuel could cause detonation on the piston and cause considerable damage to the engine. Flow mode 19. The settings are 0.65 milliseconds and 760 RPM. We have now set the RPM and millisecond settings to that of the idle on a VW FSI Golf. As you can see, there is nothing visible coming from the injector. At a higher pressure, you would see even less. With some of these injectors, when run on single section, you can hear them pulsing and see some form of displacement. On others, nothing. This could be a fault of the injector, or in this case, using the wrong injector for the setting. If they were all from the same engine, you should see them all performing the same. We now set the display to Function 7 Automatic. The program will run through all the programs possible for the eight injectors. Fewer injectors will allow more test modes. The difference in the spray patterns and failure in the electronic operation would mean many of these are not acceptable to be returned to the engine. Even if the flow rates were correct, unless the sprays and operation are correct, they cannot be used. We have now selected the static flow mode. This will run the injectors in wide open mode. This will enable the user to check the static deliveries of the injectors and compare the results against the dynamic deliveries. This highlights an issue that may be related to the electronic operation of the injector. It is also a good opportunity to visually see exactly what shape the spray should be. By rotating the injectors during this mode, you can determine if all the injectors are spraying at the same shape and angle. The final test is to measure the flow rates. Do not adjust the fuel pressure, it must remain the same. As you can see, if you were trying to examine the spray pattern in the glass tube, you would not see anything or be able to give a correct professional diagnosis of the injector's performance. The imbalance in the flow rates are outside the manufacturer's tolerances, in this case plus or minus 3%. These differences are too great for the Lambda or even the adaptive fuel trim system to compensate. If after ultrasonic cleaning these injectors did not return to specification, they would need to be replaced. Return the fuel rail to the display window. If you wish to carry out any other flow rate test, drain the tubes and select your desired program. If you find that the end of the injector has carbon buildup, we recommend the ends of the injectors are cleaned in the ASNEW ultrasonic cleaning bath. Before cleaning.